this weekend I want to do some fun and rank one of my favorite movie franchises of all time and that is the Rocky franchise. For me this is a top five favorite movie series of all time. My wife thinks that Stallone is probably my favorite actor. I don't like to pick favorites but she's probably not wrong and a lot of that goes back to just this film series right here that has had some high points, some low points, some insane points but much like the lead character himself, the constant underdog who keeps overcoming the odds, this series has kept overcoming the odds for a long time. When it got insane, somehow it managed to come back multiple times for multiple revivals of the own series itself while tying that into the plot of the movie, movies themselves. So I love this series. So with that said, let's look at how Rotten Tomatoes rated these movies. Coming in at number seven is Rocky V with 28%. No surprise there. Coming in at number six is Rocky IV with 39%. Coming in at number five is Rocky III with 63%. Coming in at number four is Rocky II with 73%. Coming in at number three is Rocky Balboa with 76%. Coming in at number two is Rocky with 93%. And coming in at number one is Creed with 95%. Now that should tell you just how cool of a movie series this is. So Rocky won, won the best picture when it came out. It was the best picture of that year according to the Academy. And then the seventh movie in the series, which was a continuation spin-off with the son of one of the characters, it's kind of a uh, kind of a direct sequel of sorts to Rocky IV, which is one of the lowest rated in the series. This movie sounds terrible. Creed sounded terrible to me as a huge fan of this series. Like, ooh, what are they doing? It is a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's how cool of a series this is. That's one of the reasons that it's so endearing is because you keep going, they're doing another one? And it does it. They pulled it off. Um, whenever you think this series is done, they have beaten our expectations. With all that said, before I go into my ranking, and I'm about to go into it, go ahead and put your ranking down below in the comment section down below. Take, give me some thoughts, your feedback. Love to get in a discussion with you about it because I love this series and I can talk about them all, all day long. And there's all kinds of stuff in this series that's certainly worth talking about in some of the directions they went at certain points in time. With all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and go and get it started with this and coming in at number seven for me, is Rocky V. This is the one that probably most people will put at the bottom, and for good reason. It, it didn't quite come together at all. It's coming right off Rocky IV, which is kind of the peak of the stupid, the absurd section of it, and it tried to go back to the first movie without fully knowing how to do that just right. And so what you end up getting is a movie that ends going from guy ending the Cold War and waving the American flag to this one ending with a street fight. It doesn't feel quite right. You've got Rocky training this upcoming boxer while ignoring his son, which all this feels like it should have the right drama and the right elements to go back to what made what like one and two kind of have a certain tone and feel to them. But it doesn't feel like one and two, really. It, it doesn't. It has its own kind of tone and vibe amongst the films, where like three and four kind of share a certain absurd '80s sports movie tone. One and two share a tone. The more recent ones kind of have a tone. And five is this this odd thing, and you can see where it almost was what they were going for. Like we can't keep putting him in the ring, so he's training someone up. But you gotta write Rocky fight eventually, so I'll have a street fight. But all these ideas, in retrospect, looking at them, are pretty bad ideas, especially in the execution, the way they play out. Even the musical choices, all of it just feels off. It feels out of place. I would say it's not an awful movie. It's just not a good movie. And that's, for me, it's the only one that's just not a good movie. There's a pretty big gap between where this one's at, and it's still watchable to me. I still put it in regularly enough compared to most people, I put it in a lot. But as for how many times I watch the other Rocky movies, not very often. But there's a big gap coming up to my next one because it, it just, it, it doesn't have the elements that you really want and you need from a Rocky movie. Uh, and it doesn't have a person you're really cheering for in it. Maybe that's probably the biggest part that's a problem here is there's no one really to root for because Rocky's not making good choices. He's not the Rocky fighting guy. His uh, new guy, up and comer guy, you don't like him. And then where it ends, it's like a street fight thing that you guess you want Rocky to win there, but it's not, it doesn't really have the meaning that some of the other stuff has in it. And it, and it also feels, 
I mean, uh, well, most of these movies feel pretty dated, but like with the Don King references with the boxing promoter guy, that's such a narrow window of time that I don't even know if it translates because they went so Don King with the nature of this character that most people probably won't even catch that now if you weren't alive at the right period of time to know who Don King was. So... That's kind of where I would I would rate that one. Coming in at number six for me, and like I said, there's a big gap leading up to this one, is going to be Rocky II. Now, I actually feel bad putting it this far down on the list because I really enjoy this movie. I watch it all the time, and the training montage in this one is fantastic. The final battle is fantastic. But the movie on the, on the whole feels kind of like uh, a lot of sequels that aren't bad. They're kind of a rehash kind of just giving us more and kind of doing some things better, but all in all feeling a little bit not as powerful as before, not as memorable as before, a little bit we've been there, we've done that. And this one in particular kind of drags in the middle where Rocky's trying to decide what he wants to do and he doesn't have support from Adrian and he's trying to do ads and then he decides he's gonna fight but his heart's not in it. And it just kind of meanders a lot throughout the plot until they're in the hospital and Adrian goes, come here, come here, win! And then the bell music kicks in, done! And then the movie great from there on out but that first part it just it it doesn't pull you in like almost every other movie in this series pulls me in throughout the runtime of the films so for me it, it's pretty low and I, I really do feel bad even the reason I was talking so long on Rocky 5 was I was thinking about changing my order I was literally thinking about changing my order while I was making this video but at the end of the day when I'm thinking what movie am I gonna put in what am I thinking what movie accomplishes what it's setting out to do the best I think Rocky 2 is is number six for me and it's ability to accomplish make the movie it's trying to be which it's trying to be just as good as Rocky and it's it's quite a bit weaker than Rocky and rehashes a few through me but man it does have some great stuff in it coming in at number five for me is going to be Rocky 3 so like Rocky 3 and Rocky 4 for me are kind of like these the 280s sports movies and I've always preferred Rocky 4 over it it's like a revenge twist type thing so I like that a little bit more in Rocky 3 Rocky the character feels a little bit off to me, uh, he feels like they made him too smart, like he got successful, and so he got, he got a little bit smarter in that. And it just, it's just never resonated in, with the simplicity of Rocky IV, but still a ton of fun. When I mean, you talk about an absurd 80s sports movie that's a ton of fun to watch, Rocky III. Obviously, you got Eye of the Tiger in here, so <laughs> that's the quintessential 80s sports song that you can put in, and this is the one that gave it to us. But they work Hulk Hogan into it as Thunderlips and Mr. T is Clubber Lang. He fights both Hulk Hogan and Clubber Lang in a movie. And if you're going to go and like come up with as 80s of a thing as possible, you've got two athletic grown men with shaved legs running down a beach wearing cut off shirts, short shorts and jumping in the, on, in the ocean while hugging each other after a cool training montage. This is as 80s sports movie as you get. And tons and tons of fun. I, I just always have kind of preferred, like, when it's not doing the, the sportsy stuff, the boxing moments, all, a lot of the character type stuff for me with where Rocky was at, I didn't like, this is the one that I probably like Rocky the least. This one and Rocky 2 are the two that I like Rocky the least in them. Even Rocky 5, I, I like him more as Rocky in those ones than in 2 and 3. Um, and just kind of the, the Rocky full of himself, Rocky being kind of clueless. I don't, or clueless in regards to some of the stuff. It's not my Rocky. Um, that side to him, I don't care so much for. But with all that said, let's move to number four. And for me, that is Rocky IV. This is the most ridiculous film in the series. The most over the top. There is a robot. There are... I think there's four different montages, uh, four actual song length montages. And this movie's only 90 minutes long. It's the shortest movie in the series. And... There's literally 15 or 20 minutes of montage, actual, a song is playing and we're seeing cutting through a series of things, thinking back to things or watching him train four different times in the movie. Um, but for me, it, it's just an enjoyable time. I love the training stuff. I love that they actually took the story in such a silly direction and they go all out on it. They, I mean, they go all in absurd in this one and I just dig that uh, somehow they pull that off and the fact that Creed redeems this movie <laughs> um, for me there's just something magical about all of that 
Um, so this is a movie that I, I thoroughly enjoy. It's probably, this is the one I put in the most. Uh, some of that's just because I'll put it on while I'm working out and stuff and try and mimic him so that I can be look just like Stallone or Ivan Drago in this movie. Um, it hasn't worked yet, but it's a, it's a, it's a goal. So uh, all in all, Great, great, fun movie. Stupid. If, you, if you've never, if you just like put this one out of nowhere and watch it, you'll be like, what am I watching? But if you know what you're watching, this is an incredible, incredible film. From there, moving into number three for me, and I'm going to go, this is tricky. This is, At this point in time, the list gets really tricky for me because there's three awesome movies that I love. So there's probably another gap here. So it seems like on the list, they're right next to each other. But like three and four, I love them as like these absurd, wacky, fun movies. You move into the top three for me, and I just think they're really good, well-made movies that explore the human character while being a good sports movie, but really being dramas at their core. So coming in at number three, three, after much thought in my mind, is going to be Creed. As I said earlier, I thought this was a dumb idea for a movie. I was like, oh man, I don't, I don't think I like this idea at all. This is not a good idea to bring back <laughs> Apollo Creed's son um, in whatever they're doing with this. And then the trailers came out and you're like, oh, oh I, okay, this is getting interesting. You're getting, you got my attention. And then each new trailer came out and they were all good. They were all really cool trailers and then the movie came out and once again, they found a way for the movie itself to be an underdog and turn out great. And so it, it's such a cool movie. I love that they brought this back. You're seeing probably some of the, maybe the best Stallone we've ever seen in his role that is the best we've ever seen him that's defined his career and he's redefined it once again, found new layers, new dimensions. And for me, one of the reasons I love this series, this franchise, is because we've gotten to see this character over the span of 40 years, going from no one to star to guy that's just older and uh, just kind of going through life, not quite sure what to do, and seeing him in these different windows, and they found a way to tell those stories with excellence. Uh, especially look, using as these uh, top three as benchmarks of little windows in his life, you see him at different places and understand wh why he is who he is, and it's a, just a really neat storytelling. And this is what Rocky's probably my favorite movie character of all time. And very much is because of like what they were able to do with Creed and use this character once again, where you can't put him in the boxing ring at 70, but you can still see him fighting for something at 70 and care about the character because it's not just the puncher guy out for revenge in Rocky IV. He's so much more than that. And we've seen him over 40 years now. And that's just awesome to me. I love this movie. I love what they did with it. Um, picking which one of these, one where in the top three for me, it's a which which nearly perfect movie do you put in the top spot? That's that's what this was for me. Coming in at number two is Rocky Balboa. Quality wise, I mean, I'm, this is on the same level with Creed as me. It's just kind of a matter of with the stories they were trying to tell, with what they were trying to do, the bookend of what this did for Rocky's boxing career. It just worked better for me of two movies that worked great for me. Um, and just. Once again, like with Creed, like with the original Rocky, the movie was an underdog. It's like, are you serious? You're going to do another Rocky movie? Stallone is 60 years old. You, you can't do this. This is not a good idea. Please don't embarrass yourself. Rocky V was really bad. Stallone's career had, had been in like about almost a 10 year lull when Rocky Balboa came out. He was he was like the bad guy in the third Spy Kids movie. That's what he did, was doing right before this movie came out, and he did some stuff that went straight to video. I mean, he was in a bad spot for really, five years was really bad, and this movie comes out, actually came out like uh, the day before I got married, and so this is the first movie I went to go see. Uh, we actually went during our honeymoon to go see this movie. I was like, just so you know, part of our honeymoon plan is that we're going to go see Rocky Balboa. It's coming out the after we're getting married. So it's this is just happening. There's there's not no no discussion here. It just has to happen. And so we did. And uh, so that's another reason it kind of has to be high up on my list. Um, but just such a great continuation of the story and seeing Rocky in a place where he's alone and he has a certain you can see where there's a certain uh, stability to his life. But something still uh, certain things are missing, which lends to a theme that's explored throughout the story. The way it plays out, they give you reason to believe the scenario in the third act makes sense. There is an alternate ending where he wins the fight and you go, no, you can't you can't go that far. But the way the movie plays out of establishing Rocky is the guy that 
does not quit, keeps on fighting in a fighter that's arrogant and cocky that doesn't train properly for the fight. Very much kind of stuff that Rocky did in Rocky three. And then an injury happening. Like they came up with reasons in the story to make the story plausible as well as boxing history itself. You had George Foreman going pretty late. This movie, the timeline of Rocky's age is a little bit kind of a moving timeline, a fluid timeline throughout these movies. So you can make the point, maybe Rocky's only mid fifties, maybe even early fifties. Um, and in which case that's not too much older than George Foreman, even worst case scenarios. He was actually Stallone's age of 60. I mean, Foreman went until he was like 50 years old. And so all those different reasons, I, I just like this movie. I, I, it didn't strain credibility for me. Even just looking at the way Stallone still looks now at 70, you go uh, modern technology and hormone stuff and whatever horse hormones or horse steroids that Stallone's on. People can be in pretty good shape these days, well past what used to be their prime. And so all in all, I love this movie. I watch it all the time. Very cool movie. Very cool continuation of things. Even finding the way to bring the little girl back in a way that made sense without doing anything weird with it. All that stuff. I just thought it worked really nicely. But that brings us to number one. And the one I think you got to go with, which is Rocky. It's a, it is like the quintessential underdog sports movie. That's what it is. It's t took a story that's fairly familiar. It's been was told before. It's been told many times after. This is the story and it's done right. And in that say that with all great sports movies, they're not really about the sport. The sport is a metaphor for the journey going on in the character's life. And so I rewatched this movie with a buddy, Nathan of mine, back uh, when I first started this channel, a little, a little less than a year ago is when this happened. And I watched it with him and he he just assumed it was a big sports movie and there's going to be fights all the time. And he watched it. He was like, that's a really good movie. I was actually expecting a lot more boxing. And that's true because the movie, while a sports movie, while being about boxing, is about Rocky. It's not about boxing. So there's only a little bit of boxing in the movie. It starts with boxing. It ends with boxing. And there's some training in the middle. But Rocky's not like getting in boxing matches throughout the whole movie. That's like Rocky IV, where the whole movie's like cutting from fight to montage to fight to mont. That's the later one. So, um, and to that point, it's a movie that explores ideas and themes that most people go through in life of trying to discover who you are and trying to asking these questions. Do I have what it takes? Can I go the distance um, in movie using boxing as the metaphor for that? But really the idea of if I try my best, if I chase this, do I ha can I cut it? And those seems resonate with me. Now, that's why some of all these movies resonate with me. And they're the questions that I've asked, I've always asked. And as I get older, they resonate even more with me as now I'm aging along with, okay, and wow, when in the first Rocky movie, Rocky was only like 29, 30, Stone was only 29, 30. And so now I'm up to like the age of Rocky three, Rocky four, where it was, anyway, those are the sorts of thoughts that I have in life. I don't know how meaningful they are for you, but they're the thoughts that run through my head as I age with Stallone in these movies. So anyway, Rocky One comes in first place for me. Just a, a great movie, great sports movie that is all about the characters and the journey and the arc. And that it's win, winning's not even the goal. Winning's not the purpose in any of this. And so you can have such a happy ending. You can have such a victorious ending and not even care about who wins the fight. That's a great movie right there when the themes come together so nicely and the elements come together. The backstory of it, of Stallone writing the script in a weekend, and of course there's rewrites after that, but of a guy doing his own underdog story to try and get the movie made, even wanting to star in it so bad that he traded all sorts of money and the bigger stars just so that he could star in the movie. And... All those elements come together to just make for a really cool movie that kicked off one of the coolest movie franchises of all time. One of my favorite movie franchises of all time. One of the maybe the best movie character in my perspective of all time that we've gotten to see over 40 years, which I just think is so cool. Anyway, that's my list. How about yours? Tell me in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Not just hear them, but let's talk about this movie because I don't want to just talk about movies. I don't want to just talk about Rocky. I want to talk about Rocky with you. So join me in the comment section down below. But if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. Hey, just like the one you're doing right now. Normally I do one related to some movie that just came out, whether the franchise or the director, as well as trying to do a second one now, like the one you're doing right now, that's not prompted by anything other than the fact that I wanted to talk about Rocky movies today. With all that said, thank you for watching.